So the main muscle group that's going to extend the head and the neck and all the back is going to be the erector spinae muscles. Okay. And that's going to be three different muscles, the iliocostalis, longismus, and spinalis. And we'll talk about more of those in just a minute. And then if one side contracts, then it's going to be bending to one side, and a lateral flexion. And then, the, so the erector spinae is just these three muscles here. The lucostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. And then the other deeper muscles are going to include the semispinalis and the quadratus lumborum. And then the ones that we also mentioned there, the splenius. So the way to remember You remember the rectus spinae as you start from the lateral to medial is iliocostalis longissimus and spinalis. So I like studying. Right? Everybody likes to study, right? <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> so again, you have the rectus spinae, which is which three muscle groups again? Lucostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. Then you have some other accessory ones, which are going to be semispinalis, quadratus lumborum, and then the splenius, splenius capitis, capitis, and splenius cervicus. So again, here's splenius capitis and cervicus. Okay, so here's splenius capitis right here. So that's going to come from the the ligament of nuchae, what that is, is a ligament that's attached to the back of the spinous processes in the neck. Uh, what happens is the, as the spine curves in, the spinous processes are deep, and then that ligament of nuchae is basically an extension. It's a, it's a ligament down the center of the back of the neck that extends from the spinous process to the skin. So it gives, some, it's, it gives a way for all these muscles to attach to. Okay, so originates from the ligament and nuchae and the spinous process of C7 to T6 from here. And then the capitis version, portion of it is going to go up to the mastoid. And then uh, the cervicus, which is this one here, is going to go to the TPs of C2 to C4. The splenius capitis goes all the way to the skull. Cervicus just goes to the neck. Do they have the exact same origin? Yes. Yeah, I think they probably have kind of a common origin. If anything, maybe the, the upper part, the, the capitis may arise from more of the upper part of it versus the other ones lower. But just to simplify things, we're just going to say that the whole thing comes off from C7 to T6. But if you had to specify, the capitis probably would be up higher. And then basically, as one side, they're going to extend the head. And then, I mean, both sides together, they're going to extend the head like this. And then one side at a time, they're going to rotate and lateral reflex like this. So same, lateral reflex and rotate to the same side. And they're going to pull this down here. And because the muscle con runs more from the back to the front, if it's, going to, it's going to rotate to the same side. And then we're not really going to get into innervation in this class as far as that you need to memorize it, but it's there just for your information. But don't worry about having to memorize the innervations. I think origin, insertion, and actions will be enough. So then the erector spinae itself, those are the three different muscles, the elliptostyles, longissimus, and spinalis. Okay, so if we break down this word here, where do, where do you think it's going to attach to as far as the origin? Remember, the mus in a muscle name, the origin usually comes first. So what does that sound like? Mm -hmm. Is this from here? Ilium? Yeah, ilium, iliac crest, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to come from the iliac crest, and then there's something else we'll talk about, the thoracolumbar fascia. And so you can imagine that's going to be in the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine, that's going to be a sheet of fascia. So ilio, so we said it comes from the iliac crest, and then 
The stylus, what does that mean? Rib. Yeah. Ribs. So it's going to go from the leg crest to the ribs. And then depending on the uh, different portions of it, you're going to have the lumborum is going to come off of the leg crest here. And then the thoracic is going to come from six ribs. And the cervicus is going to come, is going to be up a little bit higher. So it gradually kind of works its way up. And we'll look at some pictures of it to get the idea. But it basically kind of starts out like this in the lower part, and then lumborum, and then thoracis and cervicus. So basically, they're gonna, all these muscles are going to extend the spine if it, they both contract, and then laterally flex if only one contracts. So then moving from laterally to medial, now we have longismus, okay, and and again, they kind of work like this, where they, the ones that are most lateral start lowest, and they don't make it all the way up. They, they have three different segments. The iliocostalis is going to come from the ilium, and it's going to have a thoracic part and a cervical part. But then as you move farther in, the longismus is not going to have a lumborum part. It's going to have thoracic, cervicus, and catheters, meaning that it's going to have parts that are mostly in the... Uh, in the lumbar portion, thoracic, and cervicals. Okay? Even though it comes from the, originates in the lumbar spine, it's still only called a thoracic part, a cervical, and a capitis part. Okay? The capitis, again, is going to go all the way up to the skull, to the mastoid. That's why it's called capitis. And again, it's going to extend the spine. And then also, in this case, it's going to, now we're talking about maintaining the position of the head. Okay? And then if one side contracts, it's going to allow it to to the same side. And then you have spinalis. So the name of it is spinalis. It's just going from one SP to another SP. So it's just right clustered in the middle. Okay. So it goes from spinalis, from SP to SP. And you only have two parts in this. You have the thoracis and the cervicus. Right. So this is going to come from the SPs of the upper lumbar to lower thoracic, and it's going to go to the SPs of the upper thoracic and lower cervical. So it goes from the midline to the midline, more like this, where the other two, the ilicostalis is kind of more laterally, and then lumborum is it's kind of in the middle, and then spinalis is more like this. It goes from SP to SP. So we'll make sure I have a picture. Okay, so this is the thoracolumbar fascia. Uh, so, in some cases, some of these fibers are going to be more of a direct attachment. And we talked before, if it goes right into the periosteum or it attaches to the bone. So those would be the more of a direct fleshy attachment. Versus here is going to be an aponeurosis. Or in this case, we call it the thoracolumbar fascia. Okay, so that's the sheet of fascia and some of the muscles coming off of it. So here, Again, when we come from the outside, we have the illocostalis, and then, and then here's going to be longismus, but and then now you can see the spinalis is going to be like this, where it's going to, this SPs are in the middle, so it's starting in the middle, and it finishes in the middle, so it goes just more like that shape, so it's more like going to go have fibers like this, whereas the iliocostalis is going to come out from the iliac crest, and it's almost going to have fibers that go more like that. And then longismus is going to be in the middle here. So then here's going to be the iliocostalis, and it sort of flares out like that, and then longismus going to be more in here, and then spinalis goes from SP to SP. Okay. 